one of the hardest things to do when dealing with sequences is finding a pattern. In fact, this is probably the most difficult part of sequences. Analyzing sequences and their long-term behavior is fairly straightforward. Um, a lot of times it, it might require a little bit of mathematical tricks, but the, the general rules that worked for limits will work on those sequences. However, if that, is, that sequence is not defined, then it can be difficult to, to analyze, especially if you have something like a recursive sequence, because some sequences don't settle down until maybe like the millionth term. Well, that's a heck of a lot of terms to have to generate before any, you know, before you can examine the stability. You can't, even if you just plot it for a million terms, you can start to see a pattern, but you're also not guaranteed that it won't flare up again. So being able to, to take a sequence, especially when it's just given as numbers and not even given recursively, and transform that into the, this idea of a closed form is super important. Like unbelievably important. So let's kind of walk through how we might do that. In the first case I have three-fourths, four-fifths, five-sixths, and six-sevenths. And for our purposes we're just going to call this the first term. We're going to call it A1 and then, and then so on and so forth. So if I look at this what I notice is that each time it walks up by one. Okay, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. And then I notice that each time this one walks up by one. Okay, that's also not too bad. So I, I have some belief that each time it's going to walk up by it's, it's going to walk up by one. What does that mean? Well, that means that I have some multi or some. It goes up by n, I guess, is really the point. But the question is, is okay, it may walk up by 1, but this is 3. So it doesn't start at 1, it starts at 3. So it really starts at 2 more than the original. So it start if, so let's see, a1 is 1 plus 2 1 plus 3. Okay, all right, that's a, a1 is 1 plus 2 over 1 plus 3. So we're trying to get this in terms of our n. So how do I, you know, how do I match that? Well, a2 is 2 plus 2 over 2 plus 3. Okay, all right. a3, so that's a2, a3. Well, that's 3 plus 2, 3 plus 3. Okay, so what if I said a sub n? Well, by the pattern, it would be n plus 2 over n plus 3. Okay, well, and it turns out that that's actually correct. And the way that we prove that's a little more complicated, but realistically, if this matches the pattern, then, then you're good. Now, that's not the only pattern we could do. You know, you could also say, that could also be your pattern, 1 minus 1 over n plus 3. Now, would you want to do that? Probably not. Um, it, it would be helpful to identify if you're taking n to infinity. That would be really easy, right, because it goes to 1. Um, this is another useful way to write this because this thinks of it in terms of a ratio. This thinks of it as in terms of like a remainder, right? This is the idea that there's one and then there's some, some sort of term that's a remainder that changes, whereas this is a ratio. So your application can kind of determine what you're going to pick for, that, uh, for how to determine that sequence. Now over here, we have something a little more complicated. In fact, it's a lot more complicated. Now, this is what you're likely to see in sort of a real-world context. you got some sequences like, that is horrible. That's horrible. Because I've got two terms that repeat. Uh, this is related to that, kind of. And I've got a five here. How in the world do I do this? Well, the key on something like this, and then this is more complicated than I would probably ask you to do if, you, if I was you know, asking you homework on this, but in the real world, this is the kind of fidgeting you have to do to get to answers. You say, okay, well, I, I don't like this. Is there any way that I can 
turn this into, I know that's the fifth term, so this is the, so if I call this B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, okay, all right, good deal. So I have B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. Now what I notice is that the fifth term has a 5 and the first term has a 1. Now the second, third, and fourth terms don't have a 2, 3, and 4, but I can make them have a 2, 3, and 4 because I can say, all right, this is 1 over 20, this is 2 over 30, 42, Okay, 1 over 20, 2 over 30, all right? Now, what I can do here is then I can say, okay, how do I, fa how do I factor this in a meaningful way? Because, uh, all right, now I've got something that's pretty nice, right? I, I, I can see that I'm walking up as I walk up the terms, but the bottom's not really helpful. So, let's see if maybe factoring helps. Well, this is... Or four times five. This is five times six. Okay. That's six times seven. Okay, I'm starting to see a pattern here. That's seven times eight. And that's eight times nine. Okay, okay, all right, I like that. Now, the other issue that is, okay, I've got this, but this is pretty simple. This is one, two, three, four, five, all right? But how do I get these? This is a one, that's a four, that's a five. How do I write that? Well, what we can do is we can kind of borrow from what we did over here. Sometimes it's helpful to split out that addition piece. So on this one, instead of one over four times five, I can say one plus three, one plus four. Okay, I know that's kind of odd, but that's another way to be kind of clever with it. Now the next one, if I have 2, that's 2 plus 3, okay, 2 plus 4, oh, okay, alright, 2 plus 3, 2 plus 4. Alright, so that's 3 plus 3, okay, 3 plus 4, alright, that's 4 plus 3, 4 plus 3, okay, 4 plus 4, And then 5 plus 3, 5, 5 plus 4. Sorry, that's probably really too tiny to read. So now I have... So what you do once you have it like this is you say, okay, where, do, where does this match everything? I have a 1, 1, and a 1. A 2, 2, and a 2. 3, 3, and a 3. 4, 4, and a 4. 5, 5, and a 5. And in every single term, it matches, you know, they show up in the exact same place. So I could say that B sub N is, by that pattern, is N, N plus 3, N plus 4. And this is not too bad. This is actually pretty easy to see. But when it's in this form, that is nasty. And the idea is that in, in the real world, you're going to see stuff like that. It's going to show up in these weird patterns, and it's going to kind of be up to you to kind of break it apart and look at it and try to manipulate it in some sort of way to, to create meaningful connections.